Hello, in this video we're going to prove that the sign test is the most powerful test and um, in reality that's not what we're going to prove. We're going to show that given a certain very vague assumption about our data and then we find the most powerful test and it turns out to be the sign test. So it's the most powerful test in a given situation. But you know, the title had to be what it was. So the data, if we assume they're independent, identically distributed random variables with the unique median, and that X is distributed with, with F, so this is a distribution function, not a density function, where F is absolutely continuous. So those are our two requirements, that the d distribution function is absolutely continuous and it's a unique median. Okay, very, both very reasonable assumptions. And those are our only assumptions. Now, if we add assumptions like the distribution is symmetric or the density is symmetric or it's normal or, you know, in, I can think of some more conditions, then the most powerful test in that setting changes. But in this setting is what we're going to try to find the most powerful test is. So... Our hypothesis is that the median is zero, or it's greater than zero. And here, um, th that's what this represents. And so, um, is it is the distribution F, or is it shifted to the right by the theta amount? Um, now, you might say, well, technically, we don't have to have it equal to zero. It could be theta not, you know, some some value. But if that's the case, then we can transform our x data into y, where y equals x minus this theta naught. And then y under the null has a median of zero. So without loss of generality, we're just going to assume that the median is zero. So now this is an equivalent hypothesis to this, and that f of zero is a half, so you know, which is the definition of the median. Now, and if the median is shifted to the right, then one minus f of zero is, is greater than a half. Um, or you could say that f of zero is less than a half, but I wrote it like this, so, so the signs are the same. Now we're gonna develop some uh, notation. We're gonna let p equal one minus theta zero. Now under the null, p is a half. Under the alternative, you know, p is greater than a half, and then f of zero is one minus p, just back solve. So now the distribution function is defined like this. It's probability of our random variable being less than or equal to some, some x. Well, we can break this up with conditional probability. So, which is this. So if we, if we assume that x is less than zero, or greater than zero, then it, we can break it into two pieces like this. And this is equivalent to that, okay? Well, this right here, notice there's no x in it. This is a constant. To be less than um, zero is one minus p, right? Because this is to be greater than zero and this is less than zero, so it's one minus p. And then this piece here to be uh, probably x is greater than zero is p. So that's what this is. And then this just comes down. Okay. So now we want to find the density. So this is the distribution function. So remember that we want to take the derivative of this. And it's with respect to that little x there. So when we take the derivative of this, notice that this is a constant and that's a constant. So it, and so it doesn't, you know, it comes out front when you take the derivative of this. Okay. So the next page is um, we want to find the density, which is, you know, f prime of x, which is this. And then we replace this with what we just derived on the back page. So it's the, it's the derivative of this plus, you know, P, that's the constant, times the derivative of this, whatever it is. 
So this we're just going to let be um, f negative of x, and this is going to be um, f positive of x. So this is sort of the uh, density over the negative values, and this is the density over the positive values, you know, given that we're negative or positive. Okay, so this is this is the generic density. Okay. So let's take a random sample of size n and then and then sort them using order statistics. So you know some are going to be less than zero and some are going to be greater than zero. And that's a safe assumption because our our null is that the median is zero. So we'd expect about half to be less and about half to be right. We're just going to say there's t less and n minus t greater. Now we're going to use the name in Pearson lemma which says we reject H0 when um, this density here is less than some K. So this is under the null and that's under the alternative. And then we rewrite the density that we just found, which is this. So we replace it in here. And remember that under the null, P is one half and that's one half. And so that's where we get the one half and one half. And under the alternative, it's just P. We, and we chose that particular spot in the alternative. And we'll just call it P. Now, let's think about this a second. So the F um, minus of X is, is from this piece here. So the domain is only values that are negative. And F positive of X the domain is greater than zero. So when we're summing all over each of these observations, if, if it's a negative value, then we get a value here. And this is zero because it's not in the domain. So from one to T, we get a value here and this wipes out. And then when we're in the positive domain, this is zero and we get a value for here. So we can break this product up into two pieces and the same applies for the bottom. And so those two pieces are from one to T, we just get this piece and then the one half to the T, but then we, here from T plus one to N, we get this. And so in total, it's one half to the N. Now for this piece here, if we factor out a one minus P, then we have to divide by 1 minus p here. So then the product from 1 to n, we get 1 minus p to the n. And the same thing applies. When the x's are negative, that's 0. When the x's are positive, this is 0. So we have two pieces. Well, notice that this and this are identical, so they drop out. And this is the product of two things. So it's the product of this and then times the product of that. So this and this piece drops out and that leaves the one half and then we have one minus p to the n and then we have just this piece here which is this so now um, we can flip this make it a one minus p over p to take it to the numerator so we'll do that but we also have to raise this to a certain power and what is that power well we're going from t plus one to n which is However many of these values are above zero is what we raise that to the power of. And that's what this is. This is how many, the number of xi greater than zero. So that's, that's what we raise this to a power. Now this is all less than k. So then this is constant. We can take it to the other side. They're both positive. And then if we take the log of both sides, then this comes out front and the log of this because it's between zero and one is negative. So when we divide the log to the other side, this uh, inequality switches. So let's, let's look at that. So since, since P is positive, we end up with just this, the number of XI greater than zero, greater than some constant K. Well, that's the sign test. So remember, we didn't get, we didn't start out to show that the sign test was most powerful. We wanted to find the most powerful test under the very vague assumption that our distribution function is 
absolutely continuous and we have a unique median. And that test, the most powerful test, is a sign test. So to me, that's just so fascinating. Well, there is, and now, um, cup one note is that since the sign test is an alpha level test, which here under the null, and we're not going to prove that, but it's pretty straightforward to prove. And the critical region, the critical region remains the same for any p that we picked. So that says the sign test is uniformly most powerful test for this very vague assumption, and that that's so exciting. So let's give a quick example. Um, Let's let g of x, and really this is an example to find, to show you what this we're doing here when we found the density. So let's let the density be one-third. You know, it's a uniform on this region here. So then our um, distribution function is zero if we're less than or equal to one. It's this, which you can show if we're between and it's one if we're greater than. So now, um, P, if we let P equal one minus uh, G of zero, you can show that that's two thirds. Okay, and you can do that on your own. Um, actually, you just plug in, um, yeah, plug in zero here, you get one third. So one minus one third is two thirds. Um, so we have sort of two, this case and this case. So if we're trying to find the probability that we're less than x, given that we're less than zero, you can show that that's x plus one. So then the, the derivative of this with respect to x is one. So that's g minus of x. And here you can show that the probability of being less than or equal to x, given that we're greater than zero, is x over two. And then the derivative of this with respect to x is, is one half. So that's g plus of x. Now notice the domain though. This is when x is zero, less than zero, and this is when x is greater than zero. So now, if g of x is equal to um, this piece, one minus p um, g negative of x on this range, and this is, and then it's p times g plus x on this range. Well, both of those are one third, so it's one third and one third. So really, this is a, it's a, uh, it's 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 a linear, you know, weighted uh, uniform distributions. But it ends up being both are one third and one third. So p is two thirds, right here. G plus of x is one half, so that is one third. Well, that boils down to it's just a uniform over negative one to two, which is one third, which is what it should be, because that's what we started with. But anyway, so I hope this derivation sort of, when you go back and watch the film, sort of makes this a little, makes a little more sense there. Well, that's all I have for today. And what a, what a neat result, you know, that the sign test, the most powerful test, when the only thing we know is that our distribution function is absolutely continuous and, the, and it has a unique median. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please like the video. Um, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.